You know, when I think about your career, uh, the at least for me, the first movie that I remember was Phantasm. And at the time, I felt it was very innovative. It, it really turned the horror genre on its ear. Now, here we are m- many, many years later, and you're doing it again. You're changing the way that horror films are being looked at. You're adding some comedy and some other elements. Did you do that or do you gravitate to these kind of stories because you felt that the genre was getting a little bit tired? You know, because we're seeing a lot of saws and hostels and things like that? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I'm always uh, fascinated by uh, uh, things that are contemporary. And uh, I had uh, come across this book that the movie is based on and I just felt that this author had a voice, and, a, and really a voice for the, the, the current generation, if you will. Uh, and at the same time, there are just some amazingly bizarre and strange elements to it that are, are, are totally different. And I, and I really think that when, when somebody is looking for a horror genre, what's really working is something that is unexpected. And that's uh, what, what this story has, and I like to think that that it's connecting with the audience here. With John Dies at the End, like you said, it was a book, but it was really underground. I mean, how did it end up in your hands? How did you find it? Oh, hey. Because it really didn't seem like that many people knew about it. Well, no, they didn't. It's actually the uh, author, David Wong, had created his own uh, new paradigm in self-publishing because he wrote these as a series of stories, and he started publishing them on his website. And uh, pretty soon he had a fan following. They, he had something like 50,000 people read the book online, which is insane. Unheard of. Yeah. And uh, then an amazing story how I found it, which is it really it's the first project that I know about that was uh, decided by an, uh, an autom- automatic uh, robot. It was a robot email that came to me from Amazon. It said, if you like this book from Permuted Press, You'll love John Dies at the End. And then I read the, you know, this piece of software had been analyzing the books I'd been writing, or had been reading, and it selected it and sent for me to read. And I read it, and it was like, wow, it was great. This is a movie, so, you know, go figure. So, uh, at any rate, um, then after I acquired the material, he sold the rights to uh, uh, St. Martin's Press, and they did a big hardcover release. Yeah, and he's on his way now. He's got a sequel coming out. He's a really wonderful talent. Well, the story is so unique, and I surely wouldn't want the task of having to take this book and adapt it into a screenplay, which you did. So I'm curious as to how much of the book made it into a 100-page script. Well, I'd say it's probably about a third, because it was about a 350-page book. You know, my, my... first draft of the script was maybe 115 pages and you know we edited it down a little bit but there was a a challenge in in shoehorning and the other problem is that there's a rabid fan base of John Dies at the End book fans and uh, one thing that I'm really happy about at the screening is a number of them were there and they were happy with how they were translations so that's a great sigh of relief Uh, but certainly the challenge was not to overlook the really wonderful stuff, but still find a way to uh, put it into a, a package. And the, the funny thing is, is that when I made Bubba Hotel, I had based that off of a, a book by a writer Joe Lansdale, but it was really a short novella. It was about a 40-page book uh, or a story, and it just it just slotted right in in terms of screenplay length. So I got a feeling the next time I'm going to adapt something, I'm going to be looking more for a short story because it's a little more difficult with a big, big. Uh, uh, volume like that. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot more material yeah. to work yeah. with. At what point did uh, Paul Giamatti come into the picture? Because I mean, this guy, he, he's such an amazing actor. Did he, um, did he did he come in late? Did he know about the book? Uh, he hadn't read the book, uh, but he was, uh, I had been uh, working with him for a, uh, a year or two and trying to mount a sequel to Baba Hotep, which was a, unfortunately it was a star-crossed project that was never made, but it would have been great because he was going to play a uh, uh, Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, which is a whole storyline that has just never been covered in movies and really needs to be. Uh, but I've gotten to know Paul. He's a, just a great guy. Now, obviously, he's the greatest living actor on the planet, in my opinion. And uh, so he, uh, I told him about this story, and he'd been hearing me talk about the book. And when I had the script, I gave it to him and read it. And, you know, 
Paul is an actor who really is, takes risks with his career. You know, he will do movies that, you know, there are a lot of other actors who play it very safe. You know, but he's out there, and I think that's why there's such, so many people are passionate about him and his work and just love everything that he does, because he will challenge the audience. And uh, I showed him the book, and he, he basically said, I'll play anything in this. And there was that the great role of, for the reporter who's really investigating out the story. Yeah, and, uh, and it was just uh, perfect for him. And, he, uh, and he's absolutely fantastic. Well, I, I think, you know, with a project like this, you have to have a good sense of humor. And like you said, you know, actors sometimes want to play it safe. And this is not one of those projects or movies that you play safe. you got to dive in and commit because it's, you know, it's so out there. Absolutely true. So for people that are going to go see this, I want to try to describe this film to them because it's it's not a straight-ahead horror film. So from your perspective, how would you describe this film? Well, where should I start? Is it the talking dog? Is it the monster made out of meat? I, you know, it's uh, it goes on and on. Yeah, well, yeah, first an, an otherworldly invasion. I mean, there's, there's a street drug, street drug called soy sauce, you know, that allows you to travel dimensions. I mean, the movie is chock full of amazing things. I think at its core, uh, well, it's a it's a, <laughs> it's a a battle for the uh, sanity of the universe. You know, the, you know, I could. Uh, it, it's got a lot of different things. It's a, it, it's an amazing. It's a, it's it's a, it's a head trip, and at the same time, it's you know, we got some great action, great horror. I have a hard time categorizing in one simple spot you know it's horror it's comedy there's some drama you know it's outrageous it's John dies at the end 